Hey, I'm Daniel DK for Banger TV. Today, I caught up with Reese and Trey from Texas Death Metalers Creeping Death. We discussed their brand new EP, The Edge of Existence, their triumphant and sweaty return to live shows, and we wrap up with a tour of Reese's home zoo. Check it out. All right, Reese, let's kick it off with a cat introduction. We need a cat introduction. <laughs> This is a chunk, but we just call him Kitty. He uh, knocked my succulent out of the pot t this morning, so he's having a great day. Well, <laughs> Chunk, welcome to Banger TV for the first time. <laughs> Reese, welcome to Banger TV for the first time. Thank you, thank and, you. And uh, returning guest Trey, always a pleasure to have you here. Always a pleasure to be uh, doing something with one of our favorite bands collectively at the channel, Creeping Death. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Stoked to have uh, both of y'all here to talk new tunes. Not just talking shit, we got new music to talk about. Let's talk The Edge of Existence. I'm, I'm kind of curious about the discussions leading up to and ultimately the decision to release an EP as a follow-up uh, to your debut full-length, Wretched Illusions. So our idea was that it was going to come out a little earlier, and we didn't want to drop an LP and then be not able to tour on it. So we figured, you know, we have this downtime without a, you know, with the end date being unknown, let's hit the fucking stew and write as much as we can. And then we can pick and choose what we want to release, how we want to release it. We didn't want to like drop 10 songs and then, you know, then be out for a year. And then by the time we can tour again, like people have already heard it for a year. You know what I mean? I've seen some bands that released an album at the start of the pandemic are already on album two during the pandemic and like really have only played four shows to support those records. Yeah. It was straight up like a, a, a concept of holding back some of the material you were working on to wait until you're able to, to fully promote it and fully tour it, right? Yeah, absolutely. We just really picked um, three, three new songs and we also wanted to do um, re-record some old songs to do, uh, do some sort of like fan service to some of our like Older fans, maybe back home in Texas, um, and also exposed some old songs to uh, some new people as well. That's kind of where our uh, headspace was at with, with uh, deciding to make an EP instead of just releasing an LP. But we just wanted to kind of hold back and sort of give something, give the fans something because it's been a minute, and then sort of, you know, take our time and uh, record and release an LP, hopefully next year if everything, the timing goes right. That's awesome. You brought it up. Um, the, the format of the EP is six songs. It's three new songs that have never been heard by anyone. And then, as you said, three old school tunes, kind of reimagined, re-recorded. How, how do you go about picking the three old songs that you're going to redo? How do you end up choosing Sacrament of Death, Doused in Flames, and Skinned Alive? Uh, that one was easy because the EP is already three songs. Yeah, it was those three songs. We were like, let's just do that EP. <laughs> we were yeah. like trying to meticulously First EP. pick ones from different... Yeah, yeah. We're just like that one. <laughs> exactly exactly and we were like we were thinking like oh should we put stuff from the demo and reese was like yeah and i was like absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> so we were like all right that's an easy decision you got all these tunes you've been working on how do you pick the three new songs that go on that ep i think these songs are a good representation of like sort of like the direction everything is is going in experimenting with guitar pedals and effects and i think you can kind of hear that on this new EP, like, a little bit, but I think it's going to come out even more um, on the LP, so. I want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, stuff that went on during the pandemic. A lot of bands in one form or another adopted live streaming and performing on the internet in some capacity. Some of them were very bare bones, and some of them stood out in, you know, way above the others. I want you to tell me about the Wrecking Ball Metal Madness and why that was such a standout stream for the world of heavy metal. Well, one, uh, Chad from Frozen Soul, we have to give him like the credit, the Frozen Soul fellas, uh, it was their idea. You know, obviously we're all sitting at home, we want to do something. Everybody's doing a live stream, but like we didn't want to just do another, just, oh, here's a band just like, you know, standing around in their rooms, just like or their practice space, you know. We were like, if we're going to do something like that, like, let's do it for real. So, you know, Chad's a creative dude, man. Like, when he's got a vision, he's got a vision. And, and he, he busts his ass for it, too. Yeah, really busted ass. I think his words were, I want it to look like a music video. And it, and it fucking did. It fucking did. It was sick. 
he told me he wanted to make it like a uh, like a Halloween sort of headbangers ball sort of type deal. You know, we we filmed it at a local hardcore venue, Central Arts, at the Hearst spot. So it it was cool to be able to just like incorporate like you know Texas and Texas hardcore and just all of our homies and see everybody. It was it was cool. It was a great experience. That had to be, for me, the absolute most standout of all the metal streams. That was super cool that you guys did that, and I know it also turned into, like, a, a live show under the same branding. And that would have been your first show back, right? The uh, the live version of that? Yes, that was, that was an insane day, an insane show. And apparently, what was it, Reef? Like, the AC, like, bust, like, something broke. Okay, the AC couldn't keep up with all the kids in there during the day. And then during our set, we ended up, us coupled with the, you know, the AC pulled too much power and we bl- we blew a transformer down the street. Whoa. So, so like, I was wearing my watch jeans at this gig, right? At the end of our set, the front of my jeans were a completely different color. Like, I literally rang out a gallon of sweat. It was the hottest set I think I've ever played in my life. Oh, it was it was drastic. It was like in the middle of the set I was playing and I was like, something is wrong. I was like, this is not normal. Like I've played a lot of hot sets, but I was like, something is wrong. Well, the worst part about the set though was that it was hot as hell, but the lights literally added like 15 degrees. So. Oh, those lights were so bright. It was just, yeah, I was just drenched in, in sweat. And I just remember coming outside, like after the set, Lincoln is just, as red as his hair like his whole body <laughs> yeah it was it was pretty bad we were on the verge of all like passing out so but we we made it it was sick it was an amazing and it was show. a sick like, set dude people were going it was crazy. a it was really sick fun. set it was it was a great welcome back it's it's quite the contrast your first show back you're all like on on the verge of heat stroke and and passing <laughs> out after the set and there's no ac and shit's not working properly and then yeah. your first festival gig back like a month later would be Dude. like the most luxurious gig of literally, all time literally four seconds before our first note of that set i looked at lincoln and i said it's so fucking cool that i'm freezing right now <laughs> let me tell you something that was an experience seeing you guys oh, yeah. in the house of blues in las vegas during psycho vegas possibly the most energetic and hungry set I've ever seen a band play in my life. It was very obvious yeah, that you, you guys were fucking Dude. stoked to be back. I've seen you high kick before, Trey. That was a whole new level of high <laughs> kick, baby. That was Dude. fucked. Yo, dude, everything about that <laughs> festival was insane. I have never experienced anything like that. Just from like, from not just a like performer's aspect, but just from like attending the fest, like the hospitality was for the artists, like we were treated like we were like kings and we weren't even like, I felt like super high on the lineup. So I can't even imagine what like, you know, some of the headliners were getting treated like it was, it was crazy. Just simple things, having stage hands to help you like take stuff on and off. Like, so sick. <laughs> like I'm used to just like doing it all myself, load in, load out, throw all my cables, do, like do all this. And it's like, Having people help you with that, having people just like, I don't know, it was just so foreign because like, I'm used to playing in like basements and shit. So I was like, say it's not a hardcore band, man. It's you're you're playing <laughs> you're playing playing big festivals now. It ain't this ain't a basement <laughs> show. It was just blew us all away, and I just think it like gave us all sort of like a jolt of energy, like to play like the Las Vegas like House of Blues stage, which sounded amazing. Like the whole energy of the weekend, we were just buzzing from the time we pulled into the Hoover Dam, like. From that moment, I was just like locked in, just ready to have a good time. You guys left quite the impression. Uh, everyone talked about your set uh, the entire weekend. That that shit was that was a band that was happy to be back playing shows. It was very obvious for everyone in the audience, and I know you guys were having as much fun as it looked like. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is kind of Reese's turn to do this part because Trey and I have already done this. We've already done the whole chat. We've talked about where we came from and musical roots and all that shit. It's, it's, it's Reese's turn. And it was cool because Trey and I got to talk about, you know, starting on one instrument and flipping to another and, you know, the background in drums and how that rhythm can kind of help you pick up other instruments. And yeah. I know that Reese, you're also uh, multi-instrumentally talented. Uh, uh, hold on. I do play multiple instruments. I don't do any of them good. 
Um, I mean, people would art. People would people would beg to differ. Um, so, my first band was Creeping Death. So, like, this was my first real musical venture. But like a year and a half after I think we started, I started a like a like a germs worship worship punk band where I played bass, and it was you know it was real easy. It was like three three five five three three five. Like, but I got better. Um, but eventually we we broke up. I started playing drums and I feel like that probably resonated with me the, the most. Like I was the most natural at playing drums. And I feel like that's kind of the reason why a lot of my lyrics and my cadences are really percussive. Cause I like, I follow the riff, but I really follow the drums a lot. And then I started playing drums in a like really, really loud, noisy shoegaze band. that was incredibly fast, like 16 notes for a 15 minute set. Uh, and that was really, really fun. So yeah, I I I feel like I've listened to a lot of different music. Like my first gig was Dinosaur Junior. That's like one of my favorite bands to this day. Nice. I fucking love Dinosaur Junior. Obviously, I like like Slipknot and shit in in middle school. But uh, as soon as I got to eighth grade, I found hardcore and I fell in love. Like I think I saw Power Trip, Build and Destroy, Rouse and Dazzle, Rotting Out, at a tattoo parlor. Damn, what a band! And like it was insane, dude. I was like thirteen, getting hit in the face with like chains and shit. I was like, this is fucking awesome. Like, <laughs> and then Power Trip played and it was like chaos, dude. Like there was there was way too many people to fit into this tattoo parlor. All the walls had these like weird, it was like an art thing with like a metal grate. So I had like mesh cuts on my arm from getting pushed into it. It was so fucked up. And like, it was just crazy. I remember seeing Power Trip set and being like, this is the shit that I fuck with. Like, this is so sick. And so... From then on, like all high school, I was super into like hardcore and probably around junior year, I got into death metal. I'd always listen to like the OGs and shit, like suffocation and stuff like that. After my freshman year of college, I was like, Trey, let's start a band, like a hardcore band. I want to sing in it. And he was like, fuck that. Let's do a death metal band. And I was like, all right, let's fucking do it. Let's go. So then I like doubled down on death metal. So was was like the decision to to do vocals in, in Creeping Death. Is that because you, you consider vocal to be the primary instrument or is bass bass and drums uh, a primary instrument as well? Definitely singing is a primary instrument. Like I haven't, since the lockdown, or I guess since I moved back to Dallas, so like a year before lockdown, we were touring all the time. So I wasn't really playing drums at all. And it breaks my heart to say this, but I sold the rest of my kit a couple months ago. I want to get back into it, but I want to like, I don't know. I want to get like an electric kit or something because I have way too many pets to practice here. Okay, you said you have a lot of pets. We only met one cat, dude. Okay, hold on. Honestly, man, metalheads love pets. Let's be real here. They don't. They don't care what we're talking about. They just want to see your animals. Oh, Reese got hella pets. This is Raven. This is Bella's dog. Sit. You're so bad. Give me paw. Oh my gosh, she doesn't want to. Do <laughs> Misbehaving. This is Bobby. He's very sweet. Oh, sweetie. I have a rat too. Oh, you have a rat. Yeah, hold on one sec, I'll show you. The cat will just sit there and stare at it. Little rats, come here. Hey, buddy. She's mean. There. She likes to bite. That's awesome. <laughs> you have quite quite the little zoo going on there. Yeah, I do. I want to kind of tie things up here and talk about what's coming next. I know you guys have, like, what I'm calling, for me, the bands I like, my biggest tour of the year exhumed bewitcher enforced dude like creeping death dude, on that so bill. that's fucking insane oh, i'm so excited <laughs> that's a festival every night man that's I like know, i literally <laughs> love every band on that bill everything they've ever released that's that's an awesome awesome tour tell me about that you also i know you you dropped nuggets saying you got tons of new music you're looking at an lp for next year tell me about uh what's new hot and coming up for creeping death yeah, so this tour, we're, we are super excited for. We're going to be playing a lot of the new EP on it. Also going to be sprinkling some old tracks as well from Wretched Illusions and Spectre of War. Because we haven't played to people in going on two years in some of these places, you know. You know, we want to give a, like a nice smorgasbord of, of tracks throughout the discography. So uh, try to make everybody like, you know, a little bit happy. But yeah, we're stoked on it. Uh, Enforced. They released one of my favorite records of the year this year. Kill group. Yes. Super stoked to see them every night. Uh, Bewitcher rips. And I mean, Exhumed is just a, such a good time. Like playing with Exhumed in our hometown on Halloween. Like, does it really get better than that? Like, that is so That's sick. Insane. That's, 
I'm not gonna give away AJ's costume, but it's gonna be sick. Yeah, <laughs> his costume's gonna be in- impeccable. So we're hyped on it. It's, it's it's just a good a good time, you know. Uh, we got a whole plethora of stuff coming up uh, in 2022. We got like three or four tours lined up, so we're we're hitting it hard. You know, we we had that long break, but you know, we're not gonna rest on our laurels. We're, we're gonna hit it hard and try to pick back up right where we left off. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm so hyped for you guys. That's, that's the kind of tours you guys should be doing all the time. Lots of homies, lots of great bands. Super stoked to hear uh, another full length record from you guys. New EP's crushing edge of existence is out now on E1. Everybody should pick it up, stream it. It was great to chat. It was great to see you guys again. And uh, I cannot wait to see y'all live. That psycho set is still burning in my brain, man. Y'all the best. Hell yeah. Thank you, dude. Thanks, man. See you soon.